welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my blog. Previously, we have discussed the nature of literature and also what is Philippine literature. This time around, we're going to be moving to another episode, but a continuation of the previous lesson about it. Okay, so before we move on to our episode for today, uh, let, be, let us be guided with the following quote by Theodore Roosevelt. The more you know about the past, the better prepared you are for the future. So in short, we're going to be dealing with past, okay? So in short, our topic for today is about the traces of Philippine literature. In short, we're going to be going back to the history of the Philippine literature. And we're going to be dealing with also with um, what are the types of writing, the style of writing, and also what are the famous literary, uh, you know, literary works way back then. So let's start now. So these are the topics that we're, that we're going to deal with. The first one is the pre-colonial period. Second, Spanish colonial period. Third, the American colonial period. Fourth, the Japanese period. And the fifth one, which is about the contemporary period. Okay. So let's start with the pre-colonial period. Okay. So the, at the pre-colonial period, as you are going to be looking into that, um, life is so simple. So if we're going to be imagining the life way back in the pre-colonial period, lahat lang ng nakikita ninyo are the things that they use for communication and also for living, which includes the Philippine archipelago's inhabitants uh, like streams, rivers, forests, cave, and other fertile areas. Okay, So if we're going to be looking into that also, the type of plotting that they have came from the indigenous materials. So the indigenous forebears of today's Filipino people. So from the bahag, from the leaves that they use for clothing way back before. Here also, native people's belief system. So they are more of, ano ba tayo? Mga salawikain, sawikain. Um, mahilig din sila sa mga superstitious beliefs. So they are very notable in many ethnic societies, which includes the tribal groups. So yung mga tribo from the Bisaya, from the Luzon, from the Mindanao, they are very, I mean, can clearly be seen. And yung culture nila here are very vivid and at the same time present sa pre-colonial period. So here also at the pre-colonial period, uh, they have discovered the first Filipino alphabet, which includes the Alibata. So indigenous Philippine literature was, was based on traditions and customs of particular area. So ancient literatures were written on the perishable materials like dried leaves, bamboo cylinder, and bark of trees. So way back then, um, the I know your your lolo, your lolos and lolas. They try to communicate using the dried leaves. Dahil hindi pa naman uso ang papel nun. I mean, the real paper. And also, they try to write uh, love letters sa mga puno. Okay? So, I know you have seen that also way back in different movies na nakikita nyo sa mga pinilakan tabing. Or you can see also into the Netflix. Or you can see that also into YouTube. Okay? So... We have or divided um, the pre-colonial literature or the pre-colonial period literature into two forms um, because they try to communicate and they try to make their own literary forms based on two. First one, which is about the written literature, and the second one, which is about the oral literature. So written literature, this is basically using um, letters, using letters, put it on a piece of paper, so the examples of this are the riddles or bugtong, the epigrams or salawikain, the po, uh, poems or the tanaga. So I know you're very familiar with the uh, riddles or bugtong, um, like ayan na si kaka, pabuka buka ka, which is kunting. So salawikain, pag uh, maiksi ang pumo at matutok ang mamaloktok. And poems um, written by different famous authors or also poems that was written by your ancestors. So next one is about the oral literature. Oral literature is basically a literature that is being spoken or through sounds. So the example of this are like the chant and balagtasan. Chant, ito yung mga kinakanta ng ating mga witchcraft 
o and also enchantment o kaya ito yung mga kanta na ginagamit natin sa may mga asuhang like that so that's uh, that's chant another one is for balagtas and this is used as a Filipino uh, Filipino form of debate done in verses so i know you're very familiar with that lalo na ngayong agosto ay very uh, ano ba to ginagamit ito para sa ating buwan ng wika okay so next one so these are the examples into the pre-colonial period the bugtong the salawikain kasabihan kantahing bayan uyayi suliranin komintan diona dalit kondiman dipayanin hibais bungaw and bansal okay so with the passage of time oral literature um, it became a story already it became a story already so ito uh, pero naka ano pa rin siya naka poem so the example of this is biag nilam ang alimend hudhud kumintang ibalon maragtas inihihi nila wad dagoyan sudsud bantugan indrapatra at sulayman and tatuang actually we have different versions of this already wherein they write it already into a paragraph form but before it was written in a poem but this time around um there are some writers that try to translate it into paragraph form okay so we'll now be moving to the spanish colonial period okay so after the pre we're down to spanish and i know you're very familiar and you know for a fact na na colonized style for 300 plus years so here at spanish period special specifically spanish colonized or the spaniards colonized the philippines so the deprivation of the indigenous philippine literature monopolizing on religious orders, themes of Spanish, European culture, the Romantic Catholic region. And I know you're very familiar also with the story of Magellan, that we are colonized in terms of our religion, which is about the Romantic, uh, I mean, the Catholic, okay? So here, we do have the Christian doctrine. This is the first book ever printed in the Philippines in 1593 by the Dominican press. And we do have also the Libro, Libro de la Lengua Tagala, and also we do have also here the Passion. These are the Spanish context of Christianity that talks about the feeling of Filipino mother towards a suffering son. So who are the Sp Filipino writers under Spanish period? So more or less yung mga heroes natin, sila din yung ating writers. Okay, so Marcelo del Pilar, Jose Rizal, Pascual Poblete, and Francisco Baltasar. Um, actually, they try to write not just only for leisure, for and but to awaken the I mean the spirit of the Filipinos to fight for their freedom. Okay, so we're now be moving to after the Spaniards, a, uh, we were uh, sold to the American, and here the American colonial period. So American period, um, this discuss about the revolution and sentiments for patriotism and reform. So more of the revolution and uh, the Thomasites were, I mean, they taught us already the English language. So the literature was written in English and we, uh, the Filipino writers become, ano to, uh, well, I mean, they already welcome the use of English language into writing. So poetry in English also was founded and Sarsuela was overpowered by English drama. Sarsuela, um, if it's uh, it's like a moro moro. The example of that is moro moro, wherein they try to use uh yung mga plays and then with stories like that. But here we have already the English drama under American period, and now we are trying to I mean use it. I mean it's still present at the contemporary period. So as what I have told you, Thomasites were the first English teachers. The Filipino learned language using it into writings. So the freedom of expression and the freedom of press were not uh, prohibited. They're, I mean, they have the free will to write. So after that, uh, there came the Japanese. So we were colonized up by the Japanese but the, at, for the year of 1941 to 1945. Here, we have three years of invasion and there's Bataan Death March. I know you're very familiar with this one. Uh, Lalo not, you have already learned this one in your social studies class. 
So we have the starving and sick American and the Filipino defend defenders. So women become prostitutes and then there's a forced Filipino laborers. So here at the Japanese colonization period, Philippine literature in English came to halt. So meaning nag stop ang use of English, but the benefit of that naman is that uh, the Filipinos try to uh, write their own literature using our lingua franca, which is about Filipino language. So Liwayway to Ishiwara, Filipino road plays, poems, short stories. The common topic of this are the nationalism, country, love of country, life in the barrios, faith religion, and the arts. So these are the examples of literature that um, emerged during that period, during the Japanese period, which are the haiku, tanaga, karaniwang anyo for the poems. We do have also the Filipino drama, Filipino short story, and the Philippine literature in English. Here, these are the famous uh, player writers way back in the Japanese. We do have um, Hernandez, Rodrigo, Del Mundo, Balmaceda. So we'll now be moving on to the next one. As I, as I have told you, Japanese period is still under contemporary period, okay? Um, as you look into the year. But I try to separate it para mas makita nyo yung difference, okay? So here are the contemporary period, which is about from 1946 to present. They are divided into the different period also. We do have the period of activism, period of new society, period of the Third Republic, and the report of freedom. Here at the period of activism, young people became activists to ask for changes in the government. National uh, list writers from youth, um, youth become rebellious, campus newspapers show rebellious emotions, the irreverence for the poor rich speak during this period of the mass revolution. Actually, this is um, more of the time of where they seek freedom, especially for the youth. That's why we do have also here newspaper um, of the youth. We do have the campus journalism already, and we do have also the bomba films. So bomba films are films or sex films, okay? So this uh, is next one is the period of the new society, which is about the 1972 to um, 1980. Here, the writing dealt with the development or progress of the country. So there is a stop of pornography. But themes of most poem dealt with patients, regard for native culture, and they revive also the old plays and dramas, which is about the Tagalog, Sarsuela, Sinakulo, and the Embayoka. As you look into the period of activism, this uh, with the uh, I mean with the recent discussion of the period of activism, the uh, it was like a year of Marcos. So years of Marcos going to the period of the new society, meaning. Uh, stop na you Marcos era so that's why there is a more freedom with the period of the new society so next one is about at the here also at the period of the new, the new society there is uh, no more ban for the radio and television the Filipino films and also comics magazines and other publication were already presented so which talks about economic progress discipline, culture, tourism, and the like. So the next one is the period of the Third Republic. This is between 1981 to 1985. So here at 1981 to 1985, Filipino poetry, uh, Filipino songs, and then Philippine films. So as you look into this, uh, I mean, era, marami dito ang mga sexy stars kasi uh, Filipinos way back then love for, I mean, they have the love for sex films. And for the Filipino songs, I mean, different genre of or different themes also, which talks about the grief, the poverty, and the aspirations for freedom and then love of God. So next one is the rebirth of freedom. So people power prevailed here. Newspapers, which were branded and became instant opposition papers overnight, which is about the bulletin today, and the books, which is about the body and spirit realization. So this is the summary of the whole period or the different eras of the Philippine literary history that talks about the literary forms based on a different era. From the Fox speeches, 
going to the free verse from the American version, American colonization period, going to ja the Japanese, the haiku tanaga, and going to the modern forms of writing, which is about the chiclet, the mobile phone textula, the speculative fiction, the flash fiction, the blog, and the hyper poetry. We're going to, anyway, we're going to discuss these literary forms or different literary forms as we go on with the next episode. I mean, for the next episodes of this 21st century literature. So I think that would be all, everyone, for this episode. Next episode, we're going to be dealing with the dimensions of literature. Bye-bye, everyone. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel if you want uh, more content of uh, language classes and literature classes. Bye-bye, everyone.